inspirational, uplifting, altogether good. The Good News, Franklin County School. Welcome to WFCS Radio, the Good News Franklin County Schools podcast. Uh, the Good News Franklin County Schools podcast was created to share the amazing work taking place in our district as we highlight all things inspirational, uplifting, all together good. I am your host, Dwayne McIntosh, and today I'm joined by some fine folks from the AIG department to tell us some things that are going on, some things to be looking for, and just all the greatness about AIG. So y'all give it up for the AIG department department for today. I'll start with right here on my right. Uh, Mr. Daly, if you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Danny Daly. I'm the coordinator of AIG, which stands for Academically and Intellectually Gifted and Fine yes, Arts. Yes, thank you. We, we know in education we have a thousand acronyms, so thank you for <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, spelling that out. And for those who might not be familiar with the term fine arts, either um, your um, performing arts like band, gotcha. music, chorus, things like that, drama and theater. Awesome, awesome. And we also have with us Ms. Alexis. You want to introduce, introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi, my name is Alexis Cheatham. I'm the AIG teacher for Franklinton Elementary School and Youngsville Elementary School. So y'all give it up for our AIG crew on today, Mr. Danley Daly and Ms. Alexis Cheatham. So, yeah, let it marinate. Yeah, let it go. So as we get into it today, before we get into the nuts and bolts of things, I like to learn the people that are doing the amazing work. So please tell us a little bit about your educational background. How did you arrive to this point now and how many years maybe in education has this been for you? Well, um, this is my 21st year in education. Okay. Um, I started my career here in Franklin County. Um, I taught first grade and second grade at Edward Best Elementary. Um, I transferred to Nash Rocky Mount Schools and worked there as an academic, was well, second grade teacher, then academically an intellectually gifted teacher. Okay. Uh, came back to Franklin County and worked as an academically gifted teacher and then the lead AIG teacher at Laurel Mill, which was school-based and some central office duties. And after doing that for, I think, maybe about a year or a year and a half, uh, Dr. Schuler was my immediate supervisor at the time, and she told me that they needed me to come on board at the central office and uh, do the important work of more closely overseeing AIG and also gotcha. overseeing fine arts. So was that like a, a natural path for you? Were you academically gifted as a child or did you just gravitate to that particular group of kids? I had some um, creativity and talent that kind of manifested in different ways. Um, I used to draw a lot as a child okay. and people would be amazed at how accurate my drawings would be. And I dabbled a little bit with music. I liked to play the violin at one point. That was my favorite musical instrument of choice. Okay. Uh, but I really gravitated a lot toward creative writing, particularly mm. poetry. Okay. And um, it was just a natural fit to go into education and become a teacher. Nice. So you brought a poem with us today. Is that what you said? I did not bring one, <laughs> but I could I could dig one up from the archives. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great to hear and learn about you and Miss Cheatham. Yes. Um, my name is Alexis Cheatham, and I have 27 years of teaching experience. Um, background, I taught the majority in middle school. Okay. I've taught 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. I've taught English 1. Um, at a STEM school. Uh, nice. So I have a STEM um, school background. I worked two years and as an instructional support teacher in an elementary school in another county. And for the past six years, I've been here as the AIG teacher. That's awesome. That's awesome. So same question for you was what made you want to become an AIG teacher? Is that kind of something you gravitated towards or... Well, uh, when I was first introduced to the AIG program, I was a seventh grade teacher and I was um, approached by my principal who said, you will make a great AIG teacher. And from that, I saw an opportunity to um, pull some students in that were very gifted in other areas that maybe had some shortcomings and more um, 
of the classroom behavior type. So I found myself uh, being put in a good position to get certification in AIG and to work my way into the program and to be an advocate for those kids. Nice, nice. Love that. Love that. All right. So let's the nuts and bolts now. So tell me about AIG. Like, how does one learn about it? How does one join? Are you recruited? Are you how's that process work? That's for either you. Yeah. So um, the initial way for parents to find out about Academically Gifted is to be on the lookout for information that we send out as a district through okay. social media blasts or through newsletters on the district website. Um, we do identify students in grades K through 12 as gifted. Um, we do a universal screening, which means we test an entire grade level um, Right now, we it's at the end of second grade in the spring. Okay. And after that, we find through that aptitude testing with the cognitive abilities test, students who um, show the potential to be gifted. Mm -hmm. um, although our elementary AIG staff also work with groups of kindergartners, first grade, and second grade students who are showing potential otherwise anyway with um, critical thinking skills, with... Um, classroom performance, maybe they read or complete math above grade level. And so we have um, different pathways for looking at talent and potential. And then um, after second grade is when we start formally identifying, although we do have some students in kindergarten and first grade who are identified now because they show mm -hmm. prom Nice. Promise very early on. Nice. Um, so there's a like a screening and referral process. Okay. Um, some testing with either aptitude testing or achievement testing, and we get help from the teachers, the classroom teachers of the students, to um, help us see what kind of um, gifted traits they might be displaying mm -hmm. or motivation traits through checklists mm -hmm. that go as part of their documentation and their paperwork that for the um, screening process. And then from there, a team at the school, including the principal, the AIG staff, the classroom teacher, maybe the counselor and some others, um, decide as a team what the best uh, identification area and best service options would be for those children. That's awesome. That's awesome. Give it up for that. So you, you, you said some key points there that I want to kind of highlight. So, um, so what, what kind of, I guess, what kind of services do AIG students get for their specific, specific needs that are differentiated from regular students? Cause I mean, sometimes you hear AIG or advanced and people think more work. Right. So, and we know that's, that's a misnomer. So what, can you kind of explain the details, what that actually means? Well, I'll start off and Alexis can chime in if she would like to because she's got her feet on the ground providing services right, right now. But um, we are differentiating um, services for their students through process, like how they're completing work, through the content they receive. So we try to give them not more work, but more rigorous and challenging work, exactly, as yeah. well as um, um, the product they where they have um, some critical and analytical skills that might allow them to take a project-based learning um, topic or mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. further than, than other students. So we might ask... Some more personalized learning kind of... Yeah, yeah personalized learning. Okay. And that's differentiated through um, content, product, and process. Mm -hmm. And through that, we try to... Um, target critical thinking skills, um, try to uh, accelerate their math and reading skills so that they are thinking more critically and deeply about passages they read, try to present them with next level um, rigor and challenge as far as the types mm. of math problems mm -hmm. that they complete. I was looking, that's good. I was looking at your um, AIG summary plan and I was seeing in there the DEP, another acronym, the Differentiated Education Plan. So is that information that will be in that plan for that student? Absolutely. Okay. We record it on that and sh and we update that annually with the parents nice. and get their feedback. And 
um, let them know if we recommend changes or if we think that everything's on target. That's good. That's good. Ms. Cheatham, do you want to add anything to that? He he said it all. <laughs> <laughs> so how many AIG staff members overall in the county do we have that serve those, those student needs? Well, we have um, four elementary AIG teachers who each uh, serve higher learners and AIG identified students at two schools. Um, they each are assigned to schools okay. to uh, work with those students. And we have two middle school um, AIG facilitators who are assigned to schools each. Okay. And they uh, mainly serve students with uh, collaboration with advanced class math teachers and advanced um, English language arts mm -hmm. class teachers okay. at, with trying to provide more rigor and challenge team teaching with them and providing some enrichments and extensions to, um, I guess you could say, um, expand on and uh, provide more engagement and critical thinking for the students. Okay. And do you kind of push in, pull out a combination of both? We do a um, pull out program okay. in which we go during their um, intervention enrichment time okay. in elementary. And I pull those that are gifted in math one day, those that are gifted in reading one day. And then we do those enrichment activities. That's good. That's good. So, um, we I talked a little bit or mentioned the um, AIG plan summary. It was kind of like a three, five year plan of things you planning on um, executing to make the program thrive. What are some of the goals you're kind of working on in that plan right now? So um, part of our new AIG plan for the 2022-2025 plan cycle are um, some of our goals are to um, capture the right students and capture more students with expanded uh, identification criteria, which are a little more, um, they lend themselves more to capturing more students and more diverse populations of students okay. by being a little uh, more flexible and not as rigid as some school districts around us. Okay. Do you ever have parents? that denied the services or anything? Uh, occasionally, <laughs> we have had parents who say, um, my child needs to stay in the regular classroom for whatever reason. It could be um, the child feels overwhelmed and, okay. and they, they feel like they're challenged too much. It could be a motivation issue on the part of the child. Um, it's not often, but it does happen okay. occasionally. Okay. All right. So what, in your opinion, what does an AIG student um, need to be successful from, I guess, parent perspective, teacher perspective, um, collaborator perspective? What do you think is those kind of mixed bags of things that makes that student thrive within that program? Um, I, um, by me actually teaching, and pulling the kids, I see that it's, it's important for them to be motivated, self-motivated. Okay. If they're self-motivated, that makes it even better. If they have a love for learning, if they like to um, be challenged, those are some criteria um, that I see that a gifted child would have or a child that is above average, um, create being creative, um, self-motivated, uh, wanting to learn more, wanting to show what they they know. Um, those good. are some of the things that I would want to see in a gifted child. That's good. Did you want to add anything to that? Just, I, I agree with everything she said. Okay. Um, and also that they're showing their full potential and that we're trying to target their um, social and emotional needs so that we're not just mm. see it, viewing them through the lens of, oh, you're so smart. Intellectual, you have to do X, Y, Z, yeah. Right. The whole child. Mm -hmm. Still the whole child is important. Exactly. <laughs> I love yes. that. I love that. All right. So we talked a little, bit, a little bit about what's going on now. What are you some things you're projecting to do for the future to expand the program? Well, um, some of the things that we're trying to do so that um, we can really get 
more uh, community involvement, parental outreach, are uh, doing some efforts through social media, like sharing things that are happening in the schools, um, targeting important information that parents should be aware of about how we identify students and the services we provide, okay. and making sure that it reaches all families. Um, we're trying to move away from sending home leaflets and brochures. Yeah, yeah. And I remember we, we, we sent a survey out on your behalf a few months ago yes. um, and got a lot of responses, right? How are you going to use that data as far as planning? Is that, that that's planning? Yes. Um, when we sent out the survey, we got some really good feedback. Okay. Um, it was overall pretty positive. Okay. Um, the survey let us know that um, the, the students themselves feel confident in, in the um, instruction that they're receiving through the AIG department. They are happy with, uh, for the most part, with what their regular education teachers are providing them. Okay. So that kind of tells me that there's a good connection between what the resource teacher is providing and with through the AIG department in, and uh, collaboration with those staff members and the regular education classroom teachers so that there's um, some level of differentiation and support um, that's contributing to the students feeling challenged and successful within the regular classroom as well. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> good. That's good. All right. So we're almost complete for today. Uh, before we leave, I do want to get you to have a little fun here. I got a little activity called Would You Rather? All right. And with, with your, would you rather um, you're going to be offered two choices and pick the best one you think suits you individually. And if you care to, you can give us a little explanation. So you ready? Yes. yes. All right. Let's see. Would you rather? All right. First question. Would you rather be forced to sing along or dance to every single song you hear? Oh, for me, hands down, I'd rather be forced to sing along. <laughs> okay. Nobody wants to see me dancing to everything. I'd rather sing along, too. <laughs> All right. All right. Where's the songs I can play right now? No. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Let's see. Mm. Would you rather have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts? Nah, let's not ask that one. Let's scratch that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you rather give up air conditioning and heating for the rest of your life or give up the internet for the rest of your life? The internet. The internet. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to be comfortable. <laughs> oh, yes. I got to have my the AC. The computer can wait. <laughs> I, gotta, I have to have my AC. All right. I'm with you on that one. All right. Let's see. Two more. Let's see. Would you rather have a personal maid or a personal chef? Hands down for me, I would love to have a maid. Please clean my house. Please. I'm I, busy. I could clean my house. I want somebody to cook for me. All right. Personal chef. Yeah, I like that too. All right. Last question. Let's make this a good one. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to stump you guys are quick with it. Though. You know what you want. Uh, we thought the thing dancing one. All right. Would you rather cuddle a koala bear or pile around with the panda? Um, I think I'd rather pile around with I the panda. I would rather pal, pal around with the panda. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm into the thought of cuddling with a wild animal. <laughs> no, uh -uh. I know I'm not. Mm -mm. <laughs> You survive. You survive. <laughs> awesome job. Uh, give it up one more time for our AIG department for coming in today, guys. This has been enlightening, um, Thank enriching. You. Definitely appreciate you taking the time to share all the great things about the department and what we can look for, explaining, describing exactly what goes into that. I think this is going to be very helpful and informative for all stakeholders. So thank you both for coming in today. And thank You're you welcome. for giving us the time and platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for listening today. Uh, if you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, please subscribe and share with a friend. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like, share and subscribe. Until next time, remember that there is greatness inside of you. Let it out 
and share the good news. And we will see you later, everyone. Inspirational, uplifting, altogether good. The Good News, Franklin County Schools.